That's new. Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome to the 2021 edition of What's In My Dive Bag featuring a new haircut because hairdressers are finally open. Let's start with the bag. This mesh dive bag is made by Explore and it is part of the Ryan Myers edition of a larger travel bag, which we will look at a little bit later. But let's open this up. I really like this mesh bag because one, your gear doesn't stink when you leave it in the back of your car for a while and it's big enough to fit my fins in it. That's not something you get in every dive bag. Lovely YKK zippers on the top of it. The first new piece of kit in my bag is this Boucher Activa Tube Air snorkel. It's a very simple, soft, supple snorkel. Why have I changed after nearly 10 years of using the Rife Stable snorkel? Well, because I stood on my Rife Stable snorkel and cracked it. So I decided to revert back to the more traditional J-style snorkel. I went with this one because it's a good length. It's very flexible, so it sits across your head very easily and it doesn't sort of hurt your ears. You can get some stiff snorkels that will sit on your ears and they can be quite painful. The only thing I don't really like about this snorkel is the mouthpiece molding isn't quite as good as I would like it. There's kind of a harsh edge there where the silicon has come out of the mold. Hand in hand with the snorkel is the mask. This is the Technisub Micro Mask. I have used this thing for the last 10 years also, I think. I'm still using it now, but they are getting increasingly more difficult to find and to get a stockpile of these masks is proving a little more difficult than I would like. So I took the recommendation of someone on my Instagram messages and picked up this Cressy Calibro mask. They said that this thing fits the same sort of face profile as a micro mask. I really like the look of this mask, but I haven't been boat diving yet to actually take it out onto a boat to really give it a good go. Seems to fit pretty well. People ask me about dive watches all the time. What dive watch should I get? To be honest, I haven't used a different dive watch since I was 21 when I got this for my birthday from my fiance. It is a Cressy Eddy 2. It tells me the time, it tells me the depth, it tells me how long I've been on the surface, which is the most important thing in a watch. It's really basic, is what it is. Next is the Slippy Wetsuit Lube. I have used this for the last year or so and I love it. It's an essential part of my dive bag. It is a powdered wetsuit lubricant that you mix with water and it forms this lovely slippery stuff. Get yourself some of this, it's really fantastic. These don't actually live in my dive bag as such, they just live on my bedside table, but they're in my dive bag, it's part of my kit. Tide Table Guides for 2021. In the UK, for some reason, it's really hard to find Tide Times published way in advance. They make you pay for that information. So I just buy these Tide table books for about two quid each and pick the areas that you dive the most. It's really helpful for planning trips into the future or seeing the tides in trips that you've been on earlier in the year and you can see maybe some patterns. Cheap, get some. Now this is one thing I've been getting a ton of questions about and that is my GPS because I posted a video recently where I was using this on a shore dive. I keep it in an Aquapack waterproof case. This is just the same sort of thing you stick your mobile phone in and it's a very simple Garmin GPS 73, no charts, it's not very fancy, it floats, it's allegedly waterproof, but this sitting in salt water all day is not going to be good for it. So that's why I've got the aqua pack like this. I keep it on my float, I can mark spots, and hopefully some of those spots provide fish later in the summer for me. But that's all it is, a very simple GPS. I think they're about 100 quid. I got it for Christmas, so I'm not sure exactly how much it costs, but I think they're about 100 or maybe 150. Another new item in my dive bag this year is an Orca Torch D710. And as you can see, this is a new product. It says sample, not for sale. Orca Torch asked me, do you want to test out our new spearfishing oriented dive torch? I said, yes. So they sent me this to test and all they wanted was my thoughts. So full disclosure there, I did get this for free, but that's about where the transaction ends. If you've ever used a torch before that uses a flick switch, it gets really frustrating. This is just press, 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 and you've got your three modes. So I don't really like that myself. I would prefer it just to be on and off and just have one setting and maybe a press and hold to dim, but I can live with it. Anybody that's used a dive torch has experienced the phenomenon. You get to a dive site and your torch is flat because it's got flicked on in the bag. Orca Torch have attempted to solve this and I think it's a pretty good innovation is you press and hold the button on it for about five seconds and then it flashes like so. 
This means the button is now locked. So you can press that and your torch will not come on, which is great when it's rolling around in your dive bag, you know you get to a dive and it's going to be fully charged. Then to unlock it, you just double tap it. It flashes a little bit and then you're back on blinding fish and lobsters. Another great thing about this is probably my favorite feature actually, the battery. This one is rechargeable with USB-C. I love that because everybody's got USB-C these days. It's a bit expensive if you're not gonna be using it all the time, but if you just want to buy one torch and be done with it, this is a pretty good option. My weight belt is one thing I get a ton of questions about. Reminder, mention Skillshare is sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard of Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community where you can learn just about anything. They have classes for everything. If you want to learn how to take better photos with your iPhone for fish in a boat or on the shore so you can show your family and friends so it doesn't just look like a dead fish, you can learn that on Skillshare. If you want to learn how to use a GoPro so you can start filming your dives underwater to show your family and friends, you can learn that on Skillshare. Check out this class by Greg Hung. If you're daunted by the prospects of using a GoPro because you have no idea what's going on with all the different settings and menus and screens, fear not, Greg has you covered. He goes through the entire menu so you will know exactly what's going on. The classes on Skillshare are designed specifically so it's easy to learn, meaning that there are no ads like this one and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, meaning you can learn how to use that GoPro, learn how to start a YouTube channel, show me your content from around the world, show the world why you love spearfishing where you are, Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. This is my weight belt. It is a white silicon belt from Alchemy. Love this belt. I don't really like the buckle that came with it. I had an Alchemy belt in the past that had a way better buckle than the one that came with this one, so I swapped it out. Not a deal breaker, but this material is fantastic. It stretches, it hugs the hips. Really nice, it doesn't perish in the sun. If you've got a rubber weight belt that only stretches a little bit, this will blow your mind. On the belt, I have standard dive weights here and here. I have a knife, which is an Omer knife, and I've just changed the way I set this up. I used to have a little clip up here on the top that normally comes with this style of knife, but I didn't really like that. So I've just gone this piece of bungee cord. So it just loops over there and the knife can't come out. I also have heated this section of the sheath up so that it sort of locks in a little bit. You can see that it clicks in a little bit there. So that helps it stay in there. It's a very basic knife, had it for ages. I haven't lost it, it works. This is my drop weight. Now I got at least 50 DMs from people asking me where I could get the drop weight I had in my last video. I lost it. I did what it said on the packet and I dropped it without it attached to my float line and it is somewhere off Portland Bill. So if you want to look in about 19 meters of water of Portland Bill, that's where you might find it. I went through a lot of drop weights until I settled on this one from Oma. It's very simple to attach to your belt. You just simply hold it there and then this bit smushes down, locks in with that little ball there. Very easy to undo one-handed. You just pop it like that, comes right off. This part of the steel here is a little bit sharp on that edge, but because it folds down over the belt like that, it doesn't really seem to affect it too much. So I haven't had any problems with it cutting the weight belt. The only thing I don't really like about this is the axle through here seems to be made of a material that isn't really stainless steel. It might be a very low grade stainless steel. As you can see, there's rust marks all over the line that I have through there. But other than that, I don't think it's going to affect the performance too much. Really like it, it was the best one I found. When I was on the hunt for a new weight belt, I decided to try these two ones here. Now, this one's from Mares, and this one is from Big Fish, I think is a Greek company. The mold looks identical to me. The plastic cam looks identical to me. It was okay, but it did tend to slip off. So the way that this works is you put your belt in and then this little piece of plastic slides up and locks against the belt there. This one was worse because the gap was even bigger because it's not coated in plastic. I just didn't really trust it not to slip off my weight belt. So I haven't really used that. I kind of use that as just an anchor for my float if I need to. Not saying the Marawes one sucks, it may work for you, but I just prefer the Omer one over these two. The other new addition on my belt is this little marker float from Oma. This is for marking holes or anything or a fish when you find it on the bottom in dirty water. So the idea is it's on your belt, you pull the ripcord, this comes out, 
and there's your float. This is a piece of lead here, and then this heads to the surface and marks your spot. Following on from the weight belt is my weight vest. Now, I bought this this year for one reason and one reason alone, the quick release mechanism. It goes on your body like so, tucks under this shoulder and then under this shoulder goes through these loops and that's how it attaches to the body. Now, why do I like this so much? It is the best and safest mechanism I have seen for any weight vest. One click and the whole thing's gone. I have this little piece of bungee on the back with a ball on it that tucks under the weight belt just to keep it from sliding up when I duck dive. They're pretty cheap. They might be 30 quid or something like that. So I really like the quick release mechanism. That's why I've got it. That's my weight vest. Other stuff I have, a stringer. This is the same as last time. It's just a T-bar stringer. You take the top off, you thread it through the fish's gills, out its mouth, back onto your float. It holds fish. It's pretty standard. You can get them anywhere. Brand doesn't matter. Get a stringer. Accompanying the stringer is a net. This is the Rob Allen bug bag, same as last time. It's held up to a lot of abuse, a lot of scallops, and it works. It's simple. Don't need a new one. My float rope is a very simple five millimeter polypropylene rope. It floats, it's fairly tangle free. I've got a shark clip on this end to attach to my drop weight. And then the other end goes to my float. Another piece in my dive bag is the lie detector. These are super cheap on Amazon or eBay or something like that. Get a set, you can weigh your fish. They may not be certified scales, but they're pretty damn good. And you can also use them as luggage scales whenever you go traveling to make sure that you're not overweight on your bags. I highly recommend getting a couple of these in your car, in your boat, in your dive bag. A few things that are in my dive bag that I use for filming, a selfie stick. This is the standard Amazon one that you get. It's cheap, it's whatever, it's a selfie stick. It does what it says on the box. I also use a GoPro Hero 7 Black. Yes, I'm not up on the latest Hero 9 or Hero 8, but this does the job really nice. And I also have the head mount for it, which I use 99% of the time. Wetsuit socks, still rocking the five mil immersion socks. I like these because they don't have a seam down the back to hurt your ankle or your Achilles when you're swimming. Gloves, however, I have gone through a few different pairs recently. Normally, what I would use in the UK are these three mil Pressy gloves. And these are really nice, except that I've put holes in them from use. I couldn't find them for sale where I normally buy them. So then I bought this next set of Pressy gloves that look pretty similar that a three mil were labeled as thermic or whatever thermic. Anyway, I took these out for the first half of the year and my hands froze because <laughs> they're like a sieve. I don't think that the seams are glued at all or they're glued very poorly. I don't like to throw shade on Cressy, but these gloves, which is not up to standard for cold water diving, they just mustn't be glued. These immersion gloves, three finger mittens, these are five mil. They seal really well and they're obviously glued along the seams because they hold air almost like a balloon. So if you want gloves that keep your hands warm, get some of these immersion three finger mittens. Speaking of cold water, these are my best friend in cold water. Simple three mil wetsuit shorts. I wear these over the top of my wetsuit when it's really cold to stop the water flushing up the back of your wetsuit when you're boat diving. The only other thing that sometimes happens is your junk can get a little bit squished in these. So you have to arrange yourself prior to putting these on, otherwise you might Everybody knows that I love Polo Sub wetsuits. I am now officially sponsored by Polo Sub as of last year. So anyone that says, oh, you only do this because you are sponsored by Polo Sub and recommend them because you're sponsored because I get the suits for free. No, I've been using them since 2012 and I haven't worn another suit since I tried on my first Polo Sub. I love them. Most of the time here in the UK, well, this time of year anyway, seven mil smooth skin jacket. Love this thing, super comfortable, super warm. And for the pants, I have seven mil Polo Sub Forza Tray pants. Now these are the sandwich type neoprene. If you want to know more about that, 
look up here, I think it's there actually, where you can check out my video all about smooth skin neoprenes and why Forza Tray and smooth skin and lined wetsuits are all different and how they work and what they're good for. I use them on the pants because it's really tough and you you tend to be really tough on your pants compared to your jacket, so that's why I use the Forza Tray. P-Tube, get yourself a P-Tube. It'll change your life. It's the best thing that I have learned about in Europe is having a P-Tube on your wetsuit. Essential bit of kit. I will never have a wetsuit without a P-Tube. Trust me, it's amazing. Next up, we have my float. This is my basic style float. If I'm going for a really quick shore dive or off a boat, I will take this because it doesn't take up much space. It's very light, it's easy to tow, and it's got a flag attachment, so all the crazy jet skis in the UK can aim for something and try and kill me even faster. This here is my larger float that you will have seen on some recent videos of me shore diving. It's an inflatable style one that you can swim out on with these handles. I've got shark clips all over it for attaching GoPros, snacks, catch bags, stringers, whatever you need to attach on there. Actually, my GPS is an important one. I attach that on here. It's got a little spot up the front to hide stuff in, but unfortunately that tends to fill up with water a little bit when you get splashing on the side of it. So if you're going on a long swim, make sure you enter that out before you, you start swimming. It can get a little nose heavy. And it has these inflatable bladders. The things I hate the most about this is the style of valve on it. It's like the pool toy valve, which takes ages to inflate and ages to deflate. So I wish it had the stand-up paddleboard style valves that you see on some of the other newer floats, but I don't need it because I've got this one. The only reason I'm using this particular one is because I also got it at a competition, also in Denmark, and it's served me pretty well. I've taken this two kilometers straight out, two kilometers back in, swimming on it. I trust it, it's pretty good, it's lasted. That's all there is to this float. Last item in the bag here are my Enegra Divars in red. These are the shorter version. I believe they are soft stiffness, maybe medium. I think they're soft. I don't know, I, f I forget what they are, but they're fantastic, coupled with the Mares Razor Foot Pockets. I use these because they fit my foot, they don't break. I've never busted a set of Mares Razor Foot Pockets. These have lasted a very long time and you can unscrew them. I don't glue my blades in, so if I'm traveling, I've got a few more options on how I pack my bag. There may be other brands of fins out there that are better, perform better, but I'm going to have a hard time giving these up because wherever I go, I know that these are not going to break. And that kind of confidence is very hard to find in another untrusted brand of fin. Like, look at this, it's just... They're just, they're just so good. They just don't break. That's, that's why I use these, because they don't break. This is the dive bag that I'm using for all my diving. It's a mesh bag, it's made by Explore and I don't even know if you can actually buy this bag separately because they sent me this giant Ryan Myers edition bag. And this actually comes as one of the just bonuses of having that bag. It's like a little day pack that you can take, but it's a fantastic dive bag. It's mesh, so all the water drains off it before you pack it into your car. You can fit my dive R's into it. It's a really cool mesh bag, but I'll show you what the bigger one looks like. This is... This is the Explore Ryan Myers edition travel bag. They didn't want anything from me apart from what I thought of this bag. And I think it's fantastic. Number one, it is big enough to carry all your kit. It has wheels on it so you can wheel your bag because sometimes you don't want to carry your bag on your back. But if you do want to carry it on the back, boom, shoulder straps included. So you can tuck them in and out whenever you want. That's a really great feature. It opens up, there's a section at the top that you can keep your stuff dry, which is amazing because if you've ever gone on a spearfishing trip and you put your clothes in the bag with wet dive gear, your wet dive gear will always make your dry clothes wet. It never works the other way. Your dry clothes never make your wet stuff dry. Always the other way. This part, it's got dividers in it, so you can rearrange these however you want, or you can get rid of them completely if you don't want them. It comes with little, storage pouches so you can organize things if you're a really neat freak. That's not really my cup of tea, but I appreciate that they're in there. It also comes with this day dive bag, which I'm just using as an everyday dive bag because I don't need to use this when I'm not traveling. Like all good bags, it comes in its own bag. You could probably use this as a laundry basket or something. Can't see myself using it personally, but it's there nonetheless. 
It also comes with a water bottle. And as you can see, I've used this very extensively. That's this bag. Thank you to the guys at Explore for sending this to me. I'm sorry that I haven't actually got it out on any trips, but if you're interested in a bag that's the ultimate, in my opinion, for traveling, I haven't seen anything better. Check out Explore, the other side. I will link it in the description. Finally, a very key part of spearfishing is a spear gun. This is the gun that I use 99% of the time in the UK. It is an 80 centimeter under pressure. I bought this five years ago when I moved here. I still love it, I still use it, and it's very basic. I've got it rigged up with a 6.75 millimeter spear, 17.5 millimeter Siegel sub bands, and I have a little band keeper on the flopper for snooping around holes. And it also helps when you're in kelp. So when you pull your gun back, the flopper doesn't get stuck on any of the kelp. I also have a 110, exactly the same, simple carbon under pressure gun. It has the Oma Match 50 reel on it with the Salvamar 1.4 millimeter Dyneema on it. Also with a 6.75 millimeter shaft, single 17.5 millimeter single sub band. This time I've got a Pathos double flopper shaft. I find this is kind of nice when you're shooting Pollock and stuff like that with soft flesh. It just holds on a little bit better. And I have it set up exactly the same as the other gun so I can just switch between them. This is one gun I get a lot of questions about when it pops up in videos. This is the Rife Euro Traveler. I think this is the 90 centimeter model. I don't actually own this gun. My friend Timothy lent it to me and I haven't really given it back because he hasn't needed it. I have the Aussie Reels reel on it. I would prefer the Rife Reel, I much prefer those, but for a gun that doesn't get used too much unless I'm away traveling, I'm not going to spend the money to go get the Rife Reel when I've got this that I used to have on my belt for my weight belt, but I've, I've popped it on here. What makes this a travel gun? Well, it breaks down in two, Super James Bond style. You can unscrew the shaft like so. It breaks down in two pieces that's really easy to fit into a bag. Underneath, it has two screws here. These were factory Allen key screws, but I thought I don't wanna carry an Allen key around with me. I want to be able to use a coin or something to undo these if I'm abroad because you don't always have the Allen key. And if you can't find the Allen key and it's a bit seized up, you're in trouble. Simply undo that screw and the gun comes apart and it has these two rods in it. Normally these rods are not carbon fiber. They are normally stainless steel. I found that when it was stainless steel, the gun was really, really heavy. So I decided to swap them out for carbon fiber. That's definitely against the manufacturer's recommendation. So if you're going to do that, it's entirely at your own risk. Despite the gun being quite heavy, once I swapped out the carbon fiber rods, I found it much nicer to use. The only thing I don't really like about this gun is the handle. I find it just, not very comfortable and particularly on this section of the handle, it's quite rough. It sounds a bit weird, but when you hold this gun for a long time on the bottom, it's just not the most comfortable handle. One improvement I would really love to see on these spears though, is having a shark fin attached to the front section of the spear, because this is where your fish is holding on on this flopper here. And if the spear is going to break anywhere, I believe it would break at that thread, but with it connected down the back here, you're going to lose it. But if you had a shark fin just in front of that thread, it would be a lot more reassuring to shoot a bigger fish. So if anyone out there from Rife is listening, consider putting a shark fin there and I would shoot a lot bigger fish or be more confident in shooting a lot bigger fish with these type of shafts. It is a very practical gun. It's easy to travel with. And if you're doing any traveling or a lot of traveling and you're not after super big fish, it's probably a good option. That's everything in my dive bag. If you've got any questions, drop a comment below and I'll try and get back to you on it. If you like this video or you got something out of it, give it a thumbs up. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you on the next one.